Good morning. Well, I hope you had a great 4th of July celebration uh, with your friends and family and uh, that you're really um, encouraged by the Holy Spirit this morning. I want to bring a message today from Ephesians uh, chapter 3, and I'd like us to focus in on a couple of things. And so the text begins simply with Paul writing, For this reason. He says, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. And he goes on from there. But focus in. For this reason. What reason is Paul talking about? Well, he's talking about everything that he's written in the, what we would call the first two chapters, the beginning of the letter. And so if you go back through like a little recap, um, Ephesians is filled with incredible declarations about God. It talks about six heavenly blessings that were released before the creation of the world. Uh, the, the, the fact that we are being chosen by God, being sealed by God with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. He prayed for us to receive the wisdom uh, and revelation so that we can see uh, who God is and what God is like and see the fact that we're seated in the, with Christ in the heavens, ruling with Him even now, and reminded that Him that we were dead in our sins, but that great contraction that God loved us and shared His mercy with us. He reminded us that we're saved by grace. It's a gift. Um, it's not something we earn. He also talked about being saved with a purpose in mind, that God has handcrafted us and shaped us to fulfill the good works He's designed for us. Um, we get the privilege of joining God uh, in His mission to the world to accomplish His work here on earth. And joining Him is a part of that is, is being a part of, of something new, a new people that Jesus created because of what He did on the cross. A new people where every tribe and language and people and nation will be one. And He tears down the walls of hostility that separate people. And we're worshiping God together. Incredible stuff. It's all those kind of things that Paul is, has in mind when he writes, For this reason. And then verses 2 to 9, Paul reminds the church in Ephesus of how God gave him the grace and called him to, to share the, the, this good news about Jesus, what he also calls the mystery of the ages. But where I want us to focus in is starting in verse 10. It says this, His, speaking of Jesus, Jesus' intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to His eternal purpose that He accomplished in Christ Jesus for our Lord. Our Lord. Um, don't miss the, the, the word now. Paul's very careful about using this word all through this letter, now. And he's talking about right then when he was writing the letter, but the now is still now. And whatever he says next is, is in play for you and I. Now, he says, through the church. Don't miss that. Now, through the church. Really? The church? A church like the Springs Vineyard, whatever he says next, is, is to describe part of who we are and what our function is? Yes. So he tells us what God's intentions are. And, and, and it's absolutely amazing. He says, he says, it is God's intent that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known should be the manifold wisdom of God. Manifold there means simply all the different parts, all the different elements, all the different features, and all the different forms of God's wisdom. That, that's the church's job, to display the manifold wisdom of God. How wise God is, how intelligent God is, how amazing God is. That's the job of the church, a church like ours. That's our job. That, that blows me away. Well, who are we supposed to reveal this to? Well, he goes on in those verses, and he says the church, that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms. 
the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms. Most of us would have thought he would have written to the other human beings that live around us that don't know God. That's our job. Well, we do have a mission to them to share the good news and the love of God. But to display the manifold wisdom, that aspect of the church's purpose is to be focused in on the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. All these spiritual beings, they're incredible beings in the, in the universe. They're powerful spiritual beings in the universe. They're not limited by space. They're not limited by time. They have incredible power and God created them all. And God wants all of those spiritual beings to look at the church and to see the manifold wisdom of God. That's God's intention. And the spiritual beings are utterly amazed at what God has done and what God does in and through the church. Can you imagine that? Sometimes I wish we could just open our eyes and, and, and look around and see into the universe around us. We're being watched. We are being watched by powerful spiritual beings, and they're utterly amazed when we, the church, displays the manifold wisdom of God. That, that's incredible to me. And more than that, we display this amazing um, mystery of the ages, as Paul calls it. He goes on in verse 12, and he writes this, In Him, in Jesus, and through faith in Him, faith in Jesus, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. That's the mystery of the ages. Jesus makes a way for human beings to approach the throne of God, something the other spiritual beings don't do uh, just nonchalantly. They don't have that same freedom. They don't have that confidence. But we have confidence and freedom because of what Jesus has done. That's the mystery that Paul marvels. That's the mystery of the ages. And we get to know it. And we get to be a part of it. And we get to demonstrate demonstrate it. That's so incredible. Equal freedom, equal access to the very throne of God. And we can't even hardly comprehend how powerful and how amazing this is. If we, if we could just get a glimpse of the reality of the universe around us, we would be astounded and overwhelmed. You know, sometimes I look at those deep space images, some of these super powerful telescopes and other things are getting glimpses into the to the universe. And we're, I, I'm amazed when I look at, at the universe and all the things they can take pictures of and describe. But imagine if when they took all those pictures, we would see the spiritual beings and the rulers and authorities that are also created and existing in the universe. That's something that even the science fiction people can't come up with what that would really look like. And sometimes I wish we could just see a glimpse of the power, the all-consuming glory, the strength and the power emanating from the throne of God. It would overwhelm us. It would, it would undo us. And, and that's why I, I think that we have to be careful uh, in the church to, to never take this for granted. If I could go on a little rabbit trail here, it crushes me that the enemy is trying to snuff out our church. He always wants to snuff out every church. We know that, and the book of Revelation displays that really clearly. But um, he's trying to take us out in 2020. What really crushes me is, is the enemy is working hard to kill us off, and many of us don't even realize it. Um, we take our church for granted. We, we don't recognize how precious this church is to God. And uh, sometimes I see responses of apathy, and it just undoes it. I, it, makes me, it makes me really sad. we got to fight. We have to fight now. There's a, there's a call to fight. The intercessors have been hearing it. The people who are prophetic have been hearing it. And there's, there, there's a general calling out. I've been talking about this the last few weeks. There's a calling out for all of us to stand up. Now is the time to stand up and to begin to fight for our church in prayer, to begin to fight for our church's life, our church's existence. And um, we, now is the time. Well, back off that rabbit trail, let's, let's go on in this text and look at what Paul um, shares now. He's talking about his prayer life at the end of this chapter. 
And what is he praying? This, let me read you the text. He says, For this reason, verse 14, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. We're all, we're all created by the Father. We're all connected to the Father. I pray, verse 16, that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That is a powerful prayer. Glorious riches. Out of his glorious riches. One of the riches he has is power and strength. And Paul is praying that, that God would strengthen us with all of his power through the Holy Spirit in our inner being, the very center, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts. Remember, hearts is the control center of a human being through faith. So through faith, we access the power of God through the Holy Spirit. So Jesus takes up residence inside of us. That, Nate, that takes inner strength. That's why we need the power of God, and we need to be filled with the power of God so that Jesus can come and take control of our life. It takes a lot of inner strength to put your faith in Jesus and, and let Him control and lead us. Because you know the temptation is to, to say, yes, Jesus, lead, and then go, no, I want to lead. Yes, Jesus, no, I want to do it, and I want to be in control, and we wrestle. It takes a lot of strength to give it to Jesus, put it in His hands, and let Him have it. And that's what Paul's praying for. And then he goes on. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. What a prayer. You know, from time to time, people have, have criticized uh, our style of spirituality that, that we practice and, and because we emphasize experience. And uh, there's a lot of other styles of, of practice of spirituality, but ours emphasizes experience. But to tell you the truth, but what Paul's praying for, you know, we need it. We need experiences of God's love. We need to have experiences because most of us, if I ask you the question, do you know that God loves you? You say, yes, I know God loves me. But that's not the same as experiencing the love of God. Experiencing the love of God takes in that knowledge, goes into the center of our being and into our bodies and our souls and our minds and our spirits, and it fills those places with the reality of His love. That's a very different thing. And it's those experiences of love that give us the power. And notice the word power. It takes power to grasp how amazing God's love is. And he talks about how wide it is, how long it is, how high it is, how deep it is. He talks about um, in every aspect of his love. It takes power to grasp that. That doesn't happen automatically. We need the power of God to illuminate, to reveal, to expose, to saturate, to baptize us in his love so that we can know how amazing his love really is. And, and the bottom line of all that is um, these experiences of God's love. Uh, and, and do you need more than one? I don't think I even need to mention that. We need a lot of them, don't we? They fill us to the full measure of the fullness of God. Full measure, fullness of God. Just think about that. That's a lofty goal, isn't it? But that's not our goal. That's God's goal. See, Christ puts His Holy Spirit... He, God dwells inside of us, and He's in the process of transforming us. Transforming us to what? We become like Him. It's unbelievable. Is it really possible? Yes, it is. And so and it's because of this possible, impossible thing that I love the way Paul brings a benediction at the end of this prayer in Ephesians 3. Verse 20, he says this, Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask 
or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be the glory in the church that's displaying the manifold wisdom of God and in the individual be to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever amen now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask and imagine what a great benediction what a great blessing and what a powerful truth God can do more than we ever ask for or even imagine do you believe that God's work his power is at work within us. It's all for His glory. And I just want to scream out, Lord, let Your glory fill the church. Do more than we ever ask or imagine. That's quite a challenge, isn't it? Well, can I share some of my prayer life with you as I wrap up this message? Can I share with you some of the things that I'm praying for? All right. Here's, here's how I'm praying. You know, and, and remember, this is my prayer. So, Lord, I'm asking for and imagining that you can grow our church. Would you bring in new generations who have never experienced the powerful presence of God and let us share those experiences before we pass off the scene? Can you transform those of us who are here into emboldened, powerful messengers of your good news? Can you do that? Can you transform us? And Lord, those of us that are not willing to be transformed, well, I'll let you fill in the rest of that. I'm asking for displays of your love that lead people into experiences of your grace, experiences of your healing touch, experiences of darkness being broken and light flooding in, experience of the chains of imprisonment breaking and falling away, experiences of life changing and transforming truth being applied as we soak in your word that was revealed to us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, experiences of amazing, intense, fun, powerful worship as we worship in this room where we gather and we join the throngs that are already worshiping around your throne lord this is what i can already imagine and i'm asking you to do even more than that and to you be all the glory this is your church lord fight for us fight for us Fight for the life of this church that we could display your glory and your manifold wisdom. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I really hope that wasn't too much. You know, I've told you for the last 10 years that I'm not interested in playing church. I'm not interested in just doing church. I'm really interested in, in, in really this single-minded focus of being absolutely sold out for God, doing the very best that we can to, to display His manifold witness, wisdom and to display and share the love of Jesus uh, as we walk together in community. Total authenticity, total reality. And, and I'm, not, I'm not interested in anything less than that. And I hope you feel the same way. So join me as we pray for our church, as we fight for our church uh, in these crazy times. Well, God bless you all. I hope you have a good week.